City Council, 8 o'clock, please stand and salute the flag. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. all. Councilors, uh, the interim police chief, Bob Hayden, I'm sure you've heard, was injured uh, in a, in a uh, vehicle, a mo uh, bicycle vehicle accident, and uh, he is in the hospital. So, uh, you know, we're going to wish him a speedy recovery, and we hope that uh, he recovers quickly. Uh, Mr. Clerk, if we could go to number one, please, on the agenda. The appointment of David Offwood, 39 Tory Street, Brockton, Cemeteries of Boards of Trustees, five-year term ending June 2019. That is referred to Finance Committee. <clears throat> The appointment of Rob May, 220 School Street, Apartment 2, Somerville, for the position of Director of Planning and Economic Development for the City of Brockton for a five-year term ending June 2009. That, too, is referred to Finance Committee. The petition of National Grid proposing to intercept nine-foot, four-inch conduits concrete encased and redirect to switch gear manhole 276-1 transformer pad location on Montello Street. Time having arrived, I declare the hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor? If so, please come forward to the podium. State your name for the clerk. Anyone here in favor? Okay. Councilors, do I want to entertain a motion to put this later at the agenda? Motion to move it to the end of the city Second. council meeting. Second. Motion made properly. Seconded. Agenda item number three, we're going to take at the end of the hearing. All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, that motion carries. Mr. Clerk, number four, please. Petition of 1260 Main Street, LLC, for an underground storage license located at 1260 Main Street in City Clerk's Office, June 5th, <coughs> 2014. Hearing assigned for June 23rd, 2014. All the necessary paperwork is on, fi on file, and the fire department has no objections. Time having arrived, I'm going to declare this hearing open. If there's anyone here in favor, please come forward and state your name to the clerk. Good evening, sir. My name is Ghazi Saab. I'm the running manager of the 1260 Main Street LLC. Councilor, any questions? I'm Councilor Svensky, Ward 4. I, I didn't get your name, sir. My name right is Ghazi, G-H-A-Z-I, last name is Saab, S-A-A-B. Oh, Mr. Saab, okay. I've, I've done business at your establishment. You have a great place there. This is one underground storage, but you already have gas. Is this, this an extra one now? Or? No, no. It's, uh, we did not apply for the license. We kind of somehow missed to apply for that license, and we're running the station, and the fire department had asked us to just go ahead and Got the underground storage license. Thank you very much. I, I make a motion for a favorable recommendation. Second. Council, we're just gonna, we're gonna continue. Is there anyone here else in favor of this matter? Oh. If so, please come forward and state your name. Anyone here in favor? If not, that part of the hearing is closed. Anyone here in opposition? If, if so, please come forward and state your name to the clerk. Anyone here in opposition relative to this matter? Seeing none this matter, uh, it, that part of the hearing is closed as well. My apologies, Mr. President. I'd make right. a motion at this time for a, a favorable <laughs> vote on that, Second. this particular license. All, all in favor of granting license, raise your hand. All opposed, license is hereby granted. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Petition of Boston Hospitality Group, LLC, for a garage license located at 444 Main Street in City Clerk's Office, May 23rd, 2014. Hearing is signed for June 23rd, 2014. All the necessary paperwork is on file and the fire department has no objections. Time having arrived, I'm going to declare the hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor? So come forward. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. President. Attorney Jake Creedon, 71 Legion Parkway, Brockton, representing the Boston Hospitality LLC. Um, Mr. Ronan Dr uh, Drury, who is the owner of another on Pearl Street, can't be here tonight. I always have my client come, but his two-year-old son has a hole in his hat, and he had children hospital surgery in the past week. So. I apologize for that, but I think I can answer any questions that anyone would have on this situation. It's the old Teen Challenge at 444 Main Street next to the old Brockton Cafe. Um, it is presently open and now owned by Ronan's uh, LLC. Uh, it has uh, been re recently, in the last three weeks since he's owned it, uh, been upgraded with almost $50,000 worth of renovations, which included uh, video cameras, Three, three new video cameras for the city, which would uh, certainly help the crime watch situation. He has resurfaced the uh, parking lot down there, if anybody's been there. The dumpster is in place. I have viewed it a couple of times uh, in place, and it's a proper one. It's got the fencing and all of the <coughs> other stuff. Um, 
it's, it's unusual that uh, there is a need for a gar garage uh, license for a car wash, but nevertheless, the best I can tell you is that uh, Chapter 148 authorizes the city council and of course other legislative bodies like selectmen and what have you to grant a license for a number of things, including it says a garage. Now, the purpose, and again, you gotta take my history on this situation, not only as a former city councilor, but as a, a councilor who appears in a lot of these situations. Um, there is, that is basically, that statute is basically a safety and fire statute because storing of cars inside buildings obviously is a flammable and combustible situation. I can tell you that the car wash is not gonna store any cars inside. It's a drive through But nevertheless, we have no problem applying for it because we were requested to do that when he purchased it. And again, uh, he's run, he runs several businesses in Brockton, including some gas stations, owns them. So uh, I would request uh, a, a, approval of this situation and be happy to answer any other questions. Thank you, Attorney Creed. Any questions for the attorney? Mr. President. Counselor. Uh, Mr. President, through the uh, city clerk, uh, Mr. Scioli, uh, personally, I don't remember ever, ever giving a car wash a garage license. Can you uh, shine a little light on this? I, mean, I don't have a problem giving them a license for a garage, but we have never ever given, I mean, when Teen Challenge uh, took over the car washes, both the north side and the south side, they weren't in front of the, front of the council for a garage license. Uh, is, is this a new procedure? No, it's, it's just a question as to whether or not that particular car wash may want to store a vehicle inside uh, at one time or another overnight. Okay. And if they have no desire to do so, then they wouldn't file for that garage license. Councilor DiNapoli, if it would help, uh, I know going way back to 1950 when it was built and then the Balbonis had it for years, there was no garage license there either. But as the city clerk has said, if there were to be, uh, and I'm just playing this uh, scenario out, if there were to be a couple of cars, for whatever reason, that got stored there at night, and there was a fire, there'd be a big insurance claim and there'd probably be some sort of a disclaimer if they didn't have a garage license. That being said, 148, um, the, the statute does indicate that the authorization is for two or more vehicles uh, stored in a, in a, in a garage, okay. correct? Exactly. Right. My, my other question to the clerk is, we have more than, there are many car washes in Brockton. Right. Are we going to require the rest of them to come in and get a license? The question again would be whether or not they're going to store more than two, two vehicles overnight. Okay. All right. Mr. Clerk, thank you. And Mr. Mr. President, Chairman. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, Councilor. Also through you to um, uh, City Clerk Zioli, could you um, look into the other car washes in the city and make an inquiry as to if they are storing vehicles inside and if they are, inform them that they need to come before the council for, for a uh, permit? I could certainly do that. I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you again, Mr. Clerk. Thank you. Mr. President. Uh, <coughs> Consigliere. Thank you. Um, uh, Attorney Creedon, I, I think one of the I think one of the issues pertaining here would be if uh, that particular car wash or any car wash was doing some extensive detailing work to a vehicle and a vehicle was to be left there overnight, uh, pretty much in, 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 I mean, that's the way I would look at it because today a lot of your car washes do detailing work, which is a comprehensive cleanup of a vehicle. They may want the vehicle to be there overnight so they can start on it at seven or eight in the morning. Um, that could be a reason why a vehicle could be left there. That is a good point. Uh, however, the, the, the modern, uh, detailing situation because I represent I think at least two of the other car washes right. uh, is ex what they call express detail. It doesn't take more than let's say 30 minutes. If there were a situation though it's possible that the, again is just as you stated the next morning they might leave a car in overnight which has combustible gas in it so it makes sense. Yeah. And I do know that I do represent Westgate uh, Sunny Aristotamian up there and uh, Ronan owns the other place on Pearl Street so uh, I'm sure I can find that information out for the city clerk and for you, Council Dubois. Thank you. Uh, right away. <laughs> Thank you. Thank to you, the, Mr. To the council, too, you, uh, you must recall if you've been to any of these car washes that all of them do not have the area to store vehicles. Right. So that's why you have uh, many car washes that don't have the garage licenses. So we have very few that have an area to store vehicles, but I would still look into that for you. Thank you. And I don't want to open a can of worms, but all of the car washes have some flammable 
uh, soaps and suds, that may be the reason for it. I don't know. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Attorney. Anyone else, any, any other questions, Councilors, for Attorney Creedon? Anyone else here in favor? If so, come forward and state your name to the clerk. Anyone here in favor? Seeing none of that part of the hearing is going to be closed. Anyone here in opposition relative to this item? Come forward, sir, if you could state your name, please. Good evening. My name is Pastor Ortez Vandross of the Full Gospel Tabernacle Church, 452 Main Street. And I have received the letter of the abutting property on 444 Main Street. Um, our church has been established there for over 60 years. Um, and we are familiar with the transition of management from Balboni's to Teen Challenge. Um, my question to you, or the, to the council is, where is this garage going to be located on their property? Um, as again, our church has been there for a number of years. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be abutting our property or somewhere else. Pastor, it's, uh, it's, there, there is no new garage. It's just whatever's freestanding there. The property is what it is right now. Okay. It's a car wash. Uh, but an attorney, you can answer this if you want to, into the record. The building, the, the building, it will be exactly as it is, and the car wash will run just at the head for Balboni and for Team Challenge. Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Pastor. Any other questions? No. Thank you, sir. Thanks for being here. Appreciate a it. Anyone here else in opposition? If, if anyone I, here in opposition? Sorry, Seeing none of that part of the hearing is closed. I, I do have a question. I'm sorry. So if, uh, attorney, hi. hi. So if there's not going to be a garage, as I understand, so it's just for cars to be able to stay inside the go-through? It is, um, Councilor Barnes, the, the definition of a structure in our own ordinances and in the state law describes that building. It's concrete and wood, therefore it's a structure, therefore it's a building, therefore it's a garage. They, uh, the difference is here, it's, it's, as the council said, it's a drive-through. There's no, it's, it's, not, it's not an auto repair, right. one of the ones that would require the overnight situation, and we don't intend to do that. If it, if it happened, it would be ca uh, you know, casual and accidental because somebody had to have their car detailed at seven that couldn't be finished the night before at the closing hour. I just don't think that's ever happened, but you know, that's probably the reason. So Building technically is not it's changing just a, whatsoever. Just a characterization, it doesn't mean it's going to be garaged at the, okay, all right, I just wanted that to That has to come back to. before you if anybody changed that use to something else. Okay. It's gonna run, in fact, it is running exactly as it did when Teen Challenge had it. Okay, I see, thank, thank you. you. With $50,000 in improvements so far to date. Thank you, attorney. Matter now comes before us. All in favor of granting a counselor. Quick question, sir. <laughs> Mr. President? Sure. Um, Mr. Creedon, just a quick question. What's to prevent this, uh, this business from two weeks after getting this license to begin to do uh, automotive repairs in that, in the, on that site? The building department and all of the enforcement officers, you have to have a garage license first of any of the businesses, but you must have an auto repair, or if you're doing further things like spraying, you have to go before the city council and get all of that. You must then answer to you people as to how many cars you're gonna store inside and outside, and what if any um, uh, uh, protection viewing, and this place is surrounded by six foot, what they call slats, all around the fence, so there's no view in, uh, you know, obstructing any ugly view of the thing. And the church is a good neighbor next door, and certainly my client is not gonna in any way change the operation other than improve uh, what it looks like, and he's done that already in the last three weeks. Redid the parking lot, repainted the building, put the video devices in, uh, has cleaned the whole place up. Because I think the fear that, that I sense, even coming from the Reverend, is the fact that you're being granted a license to operate a garage now not just the store, but it's a, it's a garage license. And unless there's some restrictions in there to prevent that business from operating a garage as everybody else would operate a garage. That's an easy answer, Counselor. You can restrict it to no cars or two cars or 50 cars. We're not interested in storing cars in there at all. So that's your prerogative to restrict it to as many cars inside and out as you want overnight and there'll be none, so. Through the, through the, through chair, the chair. Through the chair to the counselor. This is strictly a garage license. This has nothing to do with the repair of vehicles, nothing whatsoever. You can have a garage license on a residential piece of property if it stores more than two or three vehicles, if you so desire. But it does not give you the right or the ability to repair vehicles. 
that is a separate license, and that's in two parts. One is a mechanical repair, the other is a body repair. Correct. But a garage license is strictly to store vehicles overnight, nothing more than that. Therefore, if that was happening, Councillor, the building department would come down with an enforcement office and say, you're repairing or you're doing body work, you can't do it, you need a separate license, which comes before this august body. Uh, Mr. Chairman, how do, we, um, how do we go about putting some sort of a restriction on this? Councilor, you can make a motion. Well, well then I, I mean. Go ahead, car wash only. Well, first of all, you can't <laughs> put a restriction on it. Through the chair to um, Councilor Rodriguez, I believe what you would do is write it down on paper, what you would like to restrict the number of vehicles inside and outside to, then you make a motion to um, amend and insert a stipulation, and then the council votes on it, and then it becomes part of the council order. If I'm Council's not legislative council is going to pipe in if you could. <coughs> a garage license, as <coughs> Attorney Creedon stated, is a license issued under Chapter 148, and it runs with the land. And you can't restrict what they do outside the garage. You can do that when you have a motor vehicle repair license. And what Council Dubois just referenced is the restrictions you typically would put on on an automobile repair or body shop license. Okay. So if they ever came back and they wanted to apply for a motor vehicle repair license, you certainly could put those restrictions on at that time. Yeah, I think my, my issue was just that we wanted to make sure that we put the community at ease that we're not uh, licensing a, a car wash that next week will become a car <coughs> wash slash Auto body repair. That's what. Uh, that's what the license. concern was. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Council comes before us now. All in favor of granting a license? On the motion. I Council. have a question. Actually, it's just it's just piqued my interest what the um, what the city council's attorney has just said. I was always under the uh, under the understanding that you could put stipulations on a garage license. So Council, please stand. We're in city council. Oh, thank, thank you. you. I didn't realize that was yeah. a, that was a rule for right it, well, now. Well, it is. You thank should. You You've been here nine you. years like yeah. I have. Yeah. yeah, but you didn't yeah. tell anybody else. But thank you very much for you're that welcome. help. Thank you. So you're telling me that if I were to allow a garage license in Ward 6, they could put as many vehicles as they wanted in it? Is that what you're saying? There's no stipulation? Then what does it mean? First of all, the council grants a license. Yep. It's not allowed. They grant a license. And depending upon the size of the garage, it dictates the number of vehicles. Who stipulates that? They stipulated in their application. And how many did they the fire stipulate? Fire department reviews it and signs off on it. How many did they stipulate in this application? Zero. So there's zero stipulated in this application. Not storing any cars at all. <laughs> so it's, it's a drive-through. It's a dry, It's a. It's a long corridor with a track. But it's written zero in Pro. the. Yeah, that's the application because we're right. A, we're a car so wash. Thank but, you very much. But to get back to the issue of what a garage license, you get a garage license first. Any other use that you want to put in there that is licensed by the city council or any other body in this city has to be applied for and then you do get to restrict inside outside storage. Isn't that oh correct? no, I really appreciate that. My, my question was just that if I were to get a garage license at a piece of land that I owned, mm -hmm. how would that be stipulated as to how many cars I could hold in it? That's all I was asking. And I think that's what my area? fellow counselor was asking, but it seemed like in the first answer it was up to the owner, and now what, what you've explained is that the fire department sets that number? Or, or does the person, when they apply, write in the application, we have a plan to put 20 cars in here, five cars in here, or, or how does that work out? The applicant submits on the application the number of vehicles they seek to obtain a license for. And the fire department certainly reviews all the applications and inspects the premises. Great, thank you. Council's matter comes before us. All in favor, grant a license. Raise your hand, please. All opposed. Motion carries. License is hereby granted. Number six, please. Thank you, attorney. Here we go again. <laughs> Petition at Scene Challenge, New England Inc. for a garage license at 1085 North Montello Street, uh -oh. in City <laughs> Clerk's Office, April 28, 2014. Hearing is signed for June 23rd, 2014, at 8 p.m. Time having arrived, I'm going to declare the hearing open. If there's anyone here in favor, please come forward, state your name to the clerk. Attorney John McCluskey, 932 Main Street, representing Teen Challenge, and I'd like to thank Attorney Creedon <laughs> for his eloquent uh, explanation <laughs> of why I want a garage license at 1085 North Montello, for all the same reasons. Thank you, Attorney. Any questions for the Attorney? Council Dubois. Not uh, the same question. 
<laughs> oh, it is a similar question. How many cars do you have in your application to store inside? <clears throat> when I applied, um, the, I was asked by the clerk's office how many cars we want to store, and my answer was zero. Great. But the application fee was determined by a minimum of five. So I said, okay, we'll file. We have to pay the fee. That's what you want on the application. But in reality, we're not storing any cars. If I bring my car to, to, to the car wash to be washed, I don't think it's going to be stored overnight there. But I'm yours says take it five. Home. Yours says five. They both you, say five. They both, you, I think they both, well, so at least the fee, the fee is based five upon five. Zero? But it's, we're not storing cars there. But your, your application said what we're voting on is allowing this building to have five vehicles. I, if I don't it, know. If what, you I, quite frankly, I don't, I don't remember what it says. I had to pay a fee for five because that was the minimum fee. Okay. So yours could be I would be prefer five. to pay a fee for zero. So yours could be five <laughs> or it could be zero. It's, uh, either, it's between zero and five. I can, I can guarantee you that there'll be no cars stored <clears throat> in this property. I think the theory was like we could have, the, the lady asked me at the desk, how many, how many cars could you fit in the tunnel? She said, could you fit five? I said, probably. But they're all going home in 20 minutes or 10 minutes. So does that mean that the previous one was for five as well? And it's, or zero? Probably. I, I just, I'm just trying to get straight yeah, information. We, we, we've That's already all. gone past that. And I believe that into the record they said zero. They said zero. Yes. So let's hope that that was accurate. But yours is five. No, the fee says five. Okay. I had to pay a fee based five. upon, I think you can get a license for 20. The fee's higher. So the minimum fee that we had to pay was for five. And as I say, I wanted to pay a fee for zero. And on the application, it said five? Or do you have the application? I'm just trying to get my head around this. This is all new. I've never had, we've never had this come before us before. Sure Well, it's, it's, it's just what the attorney said. They put five over time, but it's uh, zero to five okay. that they're paying for. It does say uh, maximum number of cars in garage in a not applicable not car applicable. wash, and then five in at one time. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? Any other questions for the counselor? I, I actually do have a question. <coughs> um, this particular establishment, just so I can be clear, this Teen Challenge, uh, 1085 North Montello, where is that? I just need to put it in my head. Which one is that? It's, it's Where's it next to? Uh, almost to Avon. Uh, it's way up on, as you're heading up North Montello on the right. It was, incidentally, this was a, before Teen Challenge bought it, and they've been operating both of these for years without a garage license, okay. as have everybody. Right. Um, and uh, when they went to sell it, uh, the question was raised as to do we need one? I asked at City Hall, I actually asked Lieutenant Williams, and he says, oh, yeah, I think we do. But so we filed. Um, but at this 1085 North Montello, it was a wreck of a place. Uh, they, right. put, they put a lot of money into it, cleanup costs. It was really uh, quite an expense. Okay, and, and that actually leads me to my next question. Those establishments have been there for some time. So for just now, them to come to ask for this garage license, I mean, that's kind of where I have a little bit of pause. Why now, after they've been um, operating as um, car washes, successful car washes for some time, especially the one on Main Street, um, because it's always because buzzing. Ronan, Why the, do they need the, a garage the now? one who bought Ronan Drury, who bought 444 North Montello, insisted that we get a garage license, and and, and so here we are. <laughs> okay. And, and he owns other. Car he owns the, the places, one up correct? on uh, uh, North Pearl Street and uh, owns the, the gas station down on Warren Ave, uh, owns car washes in, in uh, uh, Taunton and, and South Dartmouth, I think. Does he store cars at any of his other locations? You don't store cars at car washes. You wash them. It's just the answer. Right, but he can. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, it just, 
if you, if you kind of follow my thinking, it just, I'm just really curious as to why now, after all of these things, um, they've been established for a while. Quite frankly, I, I, I don't think we really need to, to be, be here, but, cars, but we wanted to sell the property, so he wanted a, a yeah. garage license, so. Okay. 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 All right, thank, thank you. you Councilor. Thank you, Councilor. Any other questions for the attorney? Anyone else here in favor? If so, come forward, state your name to the clerk. Anyone here in favor? Seeing none, that part of the hearing is closed. Anyone here in opposition? Anyone here in opposition about this? If so, come forward, state your name to the clerk. Seeing none, that part of the hearing is closed. Councils, all in favor of granting a license? All opposed. License is hereby granted. Report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of June 16, 2014. That is accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor submitting his commentary on the fiscal 15 <coughs> budget. That too is accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor in accordance with Mass General Laws recommending the approval of the City Council for a net metering power purchase agreement between Nugent Capital Management and the City of Brockton. This agreement is for the purchase of solar power for a solar plant which will save the city in electricity costs. That too accepted and placed on file. This is a Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Chief of Police requested an authorization to expend grant funds related to the Old Colony Planning Council Fiscal 14 Sustained Traffic Enforcement Program for <coughs> Pedestrian Bicycle Safety. That is accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor recommending the same. Council is also accepted and placed on file. <laughs> Communication from the CFO relative to the same. That too accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Chief of Police requested for authorization to expend grant monies related to Fiscal 13, Department of Justice, Bureau of Justice Assisted Grant, any amount of $89,969.70. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor recommending the same. Also accepted and placed on file. CFO relative to the same. That too accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Assistant Auditor certifying as of June 17, 2014, the balance of the stabilization fund is $2,402,245.87. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, recommending that the City Council authorize the appropriation in the amount of $130,000 from the stabilization fund to the MSBA Accelerated Repair Program for Ashfield Middle School, Barrett Russell School, Brookfield School, Gilmore School, Early Childhood Center, in order to provide funding to collaborate with the MSBA in conducting a feasible study for potential roof, boiler, window, and door replacement at the named school. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO. That too is accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, recommended the City Council authorize the Mayor to execute the intermunicipal agreement with the Town of Abington. The 20-year agreement replaces a contract for sewage treatment services, which has been in place for many years. It simple, simplifies the billing calculations while retaining the concept that Abington will share in the fashion of a common user in the cost of the sewer enterprise budget allocated to the town on the basis of the town's metered flow as a percentage of the total flow at the plant. It also grants the town an additional allocation of 500,000 gallons per day subject to a regulatory approval. The present allocation is 1 million gallons per day. This allocation, if used, would generate almost $500,000 in additional revenues for the city at this year's cost. That is accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Also accepted and placed on file, Councilors. We have the appointment of George Fisk, 238 Court Street, Brockton, to the Brockton Board of Health for a three-year term ending June 2017. And Council, May 27, 2014, refer to the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Questions on confirmation by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, could you please read the roll? Yes. No. Cruz. Yes. Napoli. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Ioneri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Zedinsky. Yes. Sullivan. No. Nine in the affirmative, two in the negative. Appointment is hereby confirmed, Councilors. An appropriation of $2,030,878 from available funds, Brockton Chapter 90, apportionment for fiscal uh, 15 to highway transportation project funds in order to provide funding for the purpose of the design and construction costs necessary for approved projects. And Council, May 27, 2014, referred to the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Council's question on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, could you please read the roll? Hazard. 
Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. No. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. And in the affirmative, one of the names. Appropriation is hereby adopted. Mr. President. Councilor Yaneri. I move for reconsideration in hopes it did not prevail on item number 23. Motion for reconsideration hopes it doesn't prevail and it was properly seconded. All in favor of reconsideration? All opposed? Motion for reconsideration does not prevail. An appropriation of $22,000 for Mass Executive Office of Public Safety and Security Local Action Research Grant to City of Brockton Police Department EOPSS Year 6 Local Action Research Partner Grant Fund and Council May 27, 2014. Refer to the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, could you please read the roll? Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. 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 Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Sullivan. Yes. Eleven in the affirmative. Appropriation is hereby adopted. <clears throat> An appropriation of $125,000 from finance liability insurance to finance ordinary maintenance to cover costs for solar electricity services in Council May 27, 2014. Refer to the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, could you please read the roll? Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Napoli. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Ionieri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Eleven in the affirmative. Appropriations hereby adopted. Appropriation of $741 from the Mass Emergency Management Agency, HMEP grant, to Procter Emergency Management Agency grant fund. The intended use for this grant is for a ThinkPad. In Council, May 27, 2014. Refer to the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Uh, questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, could you please read the roll? Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Eleven in the affirmative. Appropriations hereby adopted, Councilors. An appropriation $1,525 from Mass Emergency Management Agency, SHSP grant, to Brockton Emergency Management Agency grant fund. The intended use of this grant is to purchase equipment to build a community emergency response team. End Council, May 27, 2014. <coughs> Refer to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Councilors, the question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, could you please read the roll? Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Stinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Eleven Appropriations hereby adopted, Councilors. Audit for the budget of fiscal 2015 and Council May 27, 2014. Referred to the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable as amended. Councilors, uh, we made some uh, amendments coming out of the uh, Finance Committee. To take a vote on those amendments? The amendment would be to reduce Treasurer's debt account by $100,000, re reduce from uh, $13,106,977 to $13,006,977. I want to take a roll call on that? Roll call vote on the amendment. Azak. Yes. Barnes. No. Cruz. Yes. Danapoli. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Stewart. No. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Nine in the affirmative, two in the negative. That amendment is, uh, is accepted as a second amendment, I believe. Uh, the amendment to reduce from the law department ordinary maintenance services account by $71,522, reduce from $371,522 to $300,000. Uh, Mr. Clerk, please read the roll on that amendment. Azak. Yes. Barnes. No. Cruz. No. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Ionieri. Yes. Monaghan. No. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. No. Studinsky. No. Sullivan. Yes. Six in the affirmative, five in the negative. Then it carries. Uh, Councilors, now the question is on the budgets for the DPW department. Mr. Mr. President. Councilor. If I, if I might, Mr. President, um, 
and if anybody, um, any other counselors um, wouldn't mind, I, I do have a question for Mr. Condor before we continue in regards to something with the budget. If we could, uh, if I anybody could ask have any objections to the Ward Three Council? Seeing none, Mr. Condor is in attendance. Thank you. Um, I'll give Mr. Condon a moment to uh, to come to the forefront. Mr. Condon, um, something that um, came to my attention and caught my um, eyes and ears was the other evening when I was listening to the school department uh, as they had their budget subcommittee meeting, I believe it was held last Thursday evening. And uh, only hearing from the background of a question that was um, posed to um, all the Petronio, and it was in regards to uh, the hotel motel tax. Now, I wasn't hearing him clear enough because he wasn't microphone, but I did hear a, a comment being made in regards to the revenues in regards to hotel motel tax coming in for the next fiscal year, maybe even in light of what we have coming in for the balance of this fiscal year that we're closing out of. But I did hear somewhere, and I thought, and I could be wrong, so somewhere, it could be somewhere a reduction of like $750,000, and that could be pertaining to the fact that several of our hotels and motels in this city are now taking on more of um, homeless families. I don't want to say homeless people, but homeless families. And, and as you know, and as we know as counselors, that when that happens, I mean, there are children involved, but yet we still have to send these children to school and educate them as, right. as well. Um, and I know the hotel motel tax um, is, is important to us on this side as well, because we're not um, I mean, we're really using a, a good large piece of that in, in how we keep the stadium operating, if I'm correct, am I right? So I'm, I'm just trying to find out what, and I couldn't hear it all, and I did place a call over there today, but uh, Aldo must have been busy, and it was later in the day, I was wrapped up myself. Um, I'm just trying to fathom out what they were talking about, and they said they had it in a letter, but uh, maybe it's something we can just take a look at. I don't think it's going to have any effect on how we vote this evening, but I'm, I'm concerned. Right. Well, I, th I, don't think, I, don't, I don't think the budget relies on the full receipt of the hotel motel tax, so I don't think it jeopardizes the budget. I think what right. Aldo might have been talking about is that the, uh, and I don't know if this is true or not, but what I've heard is that the placement of homeless families in there at the um, cost of the state results in what would normally be the city's payment of the uh, room excise tax not being paid because the state isn't, isn't paying. State, right. okay. So I don't think all the city's hotel rooms are subject to that, so the amount that was stated, uh, 750, sounds excessive to me, but um, yeah. I can check into it. Yeah, could, could you please and maybe you, you know, get back to us and um, give us some information on that? I'm just concerned about it because it's still it's revenue, about a part of budget in a way, but it's revenue that you know, the city relies on, so it, it just yeah. would and if some concern. And if it's true, I would say I don't think it's a proper thing for the state to do. Exactly. I won't disagree with you on that. Yeah, I, and, but I mean, not, not the placement, but to not pay the city's excise tax. I'm just concerned the more and more homeless families you have living in yeah. hotels and motels is definitely going to drain, you know, the resource that we use as well. So well, we've had a long discussion in this budget season about the appropriateness of what the state's doing with respect to the city in terms of financing the obligations that we take on uh, for the poor citizens of the community, both in educating them, and now it turns out that there may be a shortage on our revenue side because right. of their actions exactly. as well. Exactly. But yeah. whatever you can find out, I appreciate it. I will. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mr. Condon. Council, the question is on the budgets for the DPW department, and will the clerk please read the roll on that matter? Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapoli. Yes. Ionieri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. That, uh, that, that, that's uh, approved. Question now is on the budgets for the personnel department. Will the clerk please re read the roll relative to that? Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Napoli. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Ionieri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Podinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Ten in the affirmative. Councilors, the final question is on the budget for fiscal year 2015 as amended. Mr. Clerk, could you please read the roll? Azab. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Ionieri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Zedinsky. Yes. Sullivan. No. Ten in the affirmative, one in the negative. Order is hereby adopted, Councilors. Mr. Clerk, number 29, please. <clears throat> Order that pursuant to the Mass General mm -hmm. Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53E and one half, City Council authorizes the establishment of a revolving fund for fiscal year 2015, consistent with the provisions of Mass General Laws, Chapter 140, Section 139A, 
the Animal Control Revolving Fund shall receive the deposits for the spray of neutering of animals. Expenditures would be restricted to not more than $5,000 annually for the purposes permitted by Chapter 140, Section 139A. And Council, June 10, 2014, refer the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Council Cruz. Uh, Mr. President, make a motion that we take items 29 through 42 collectively. Second. Second. Motion is made properly seconded to take uh, collectively agenda items 29 through 42. All in favor of that, please raise your hand. All opposed, that motion carries. Mr. Clerk, red 29. <clears throat> this would be a revolving fund. Uh, for the sole purpose of funding the Keep Brockton Beautiful program. The revolving fund for the composting bin distribution program for the Municipal Recycling Grant Executive Office of Environmental Affairs and Department of Environmental Protection. <clears throat> revolving fund for the pocket authority uh, violation fines. Revolving fund for the Manning and Cosgrove pools uh, shall not exceed $80,000, shall be week. limited to the spending purposes for ordinary maintenance expenses <laughs> to operate the pool. Revolving fund so for the sole be. purpose of funding of the acquisition and installation of grave liners. A revolving fund for the demolition of buildings in the city of Brockton. <laughs> revolving fund for the sole purpose of funding the creation and maintenance of the abandoned building registry as well as the closing and boarding up of vacant and abandoned buildings. Revolving fund in connection with the operation of the War Memorial Building. Revolving fund for the Police Department closed cases. Revolving fund for fiscal 215 for the sole purpose of spending by the police chief for ordinary maintenance expenses of the Police Department. Revolving fund for the K-9 unit of the Brockton Police Department. Revolving fund for the auditor public records request for the sole purpose of reimbursing departments for the cost of complying with requests for public records. Revolving fund for the acceptance and expenditures by the Women's Commission of receipts and donations from various events. A revolving fund for the cash receipts from Comcast. Councilors, collectively 29 through 42, the question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, could you please read the roll? Exactly. Yes. 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 Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. 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 Those orders, 29 through 42, collectively, are hereby adopted. Mr. Clerk, 43, please. Order that the City Council authorizes the approval of net metering power purchase agreement between Eugen Capital Management LLC and the City of Brockton. This agreement is for the purchase of solar power from a solar plant, which will save the city and electricity costs. That is referred to Finance Committee. Order that the City Council authorizes the Mayor to enter into the intermunicipal agreement between the Town of Abington, City of Brockton, for transport and treatment of wastewater from Abington and transmission. This agreement is intended to supersede and replace the current agreement between the parties. That is referred to Finance Committee. Mr. President. Council. I'd like to make a motion to take number 45 under suspension of the rules and act on it this evening due to the nature of summer session. Second. Second. Motion made, properly seconded to take a 45 uh, and act on the suspension of the rules tonight. All in favor? All opposed? That motion carries. Thank you, Council. Order that the Brockton DPW is authorized to issue a single family home sewer connection to the owners of the land located at Zero Claremont Avenue, Brockton. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, could you please read the roll? Yes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Why? Yes. Ionary. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Sedinsky. Yes. Solomon. Yes. Council's order is hereby adopted. Council. I move for reconsideration in the hope that it does not prevail. Second. Second. Motion for reconsideration in hopes it does not prevail is properly second. All in favor of reconsideration? All opposed? Motion for reconsideration does not prevail. Thank, Thank you. you. An appropriation of $130,000 
from the Stabiliz Stabilization Fund to M MSBA Accelerated Repair Program for Ashfield Middle School, Barrett Russell School, Brookfield School, Gilmore School, Early Childhood Center, in order to provide funding to collaborate with the MSBA in conducting a feasibility study for potential roof, boiler, window, and door replacement at the named schools. However, for the record, the stabilization fund balance prior to a favorable vote is only $2.4 million. Additional future funding from city sources will impose a significant financing challenge, even with state assistance at 80%. The certification letter is not applicable to these future costs, which will likely be from borrowing with city council approval to be sought at a later date. Refer to Finance Committee. Councilor Stadinsky. Mr. President, I'd move to take the uh, number 47 under suspension of the rules due to the fact that it is grant money and it has to be used during the good weather, which is now here and Second. won't be for long. Thank you, Council. Motion made properly seconded to act on number 47 under suspension of the rules. All in favor? All opposed? That motion carries. Mr. Clerk. An appropriation of $10,000 from Mass Department of Highway via the Old Colony Planning Council Fiscal 14 Sustained Traffic Enforcement Program for Pedestrians Bicycle Safety mm -hmm. Grant to Brockton Police via the Old Colony Planning Council Fiscal 14 Sustained Traffic Enforcement Pro Program for Pedestrian Bicycle Safety Grant Fund. These overtime grant funds will be used to help the Brockton Police Department step up enforcement specifically related to the pedestrian and bicycle issues in the form of issuing citations, warning, and tracking feedback. There is no required match from the city. Questions on a confirmation by a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Clerk, please read the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Napoli. Yes. Wow. Yes. Pioneers. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. 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 Appropriation is hereby granted and adopted. Mr. President. Counselor. Move for reconsideration in hopes it does second. not prevail. Motion for reconsideration in hopes it doesn't prevail is properly second. All in favor of reconsideration? All opposed? Motion for reconsideration does not prevail. Thank you, Counselor. Thank you, sir. An appropriation of $89,969.70 from the U.S. Department of Justice, Bureau of Justice Assistant, Fiscal 13 Grant, to Brockton Police Fiscal 13 Justice Assistant Grant Fund. These grant funds will be used to continue the community's proactive approach in assisting victims of domestic and community violence by hiring a part-time social worker to, to be housed at the Brockton Police Department. That's referred to Finance Committee. A resolve that the Mayor, Superintendent of Utilities, and the members of the Water Commission be invited to appear before a committee of this council to discuss the rates charged for water in the city. That is referred to finance. Resolved that the representatives of the Department of Public Works be invited to appear before a committee of this council to discuss the possibility of implementation of uniform trash barrels. Referred to finance. Councilors, we're going to go back to agenda item number three. Uh, is the uh, petitioner here, Ingrid? Time haven't arrived. I'm going to declare the hearing open. Anyone here in favor? If so, come forward. State your name. Anyone here? Causes. I'm going to entertain a motion. Motion to postpone. Second. Motion made. Uh, properly second to postpone till the next city council meeting, which will be the fourth Monday in June. All in favor? July. 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 I'm sorry. Jeez, the summer's going away. Mr. President. <laughs> Yes, Council. I think there's a gentleman in the back that oh, might Council, be Oh, Council, you hear someone's here. Please come forward, sir. We almost You're going to revoke the motion, Council? Council, no, you revoking the motion? Yes, sir, Mr. President. Motion is hereby revoked, oh. sir. Councilman, I got a question for you. I'm looking at the petition that was sent to my office. Excuse me. Yes. Are you here relative to this matter? Yes. Okay, the hearing is open. You need to state your name to the clerk, please. Yes, Jim Pearson, um, engineer from National Grid. Thank you, sir question for you, and I'm looking at the description of the petition. The petition that I wrote should say Montello Street, Anchorage to install four four-inch conduits, concrete in case, between Manhole 226 and Manhole 11 Montello Street at Ward Street, also known as Petronelli Way, approximately 31 feet. New conduits are required due to National Grid extending primary power to the residents at Center and Main Street in the Enterprise Building. With that, there was a sketch that also went along with it, because I was reading the description that he had, and it's not matching what I got right here. Yeah, you know what? We're going to take a two-minute recess. I'll Very good.
Yeah. Through a legislative council. The applicant <laughs> would like to withdraw, so a motion to grant leave to withdraw was the other one. Casas, motion to uh, grant leave and withdraw. I'd like to entertain that. Someone make a motion on that. So I make moved. that a motion. So moved. So moved. And it was properly seconded. Second. Second. All in favor of that motion? All opposed? Withdraw motion is hereby granted. Thank you, sir. Mr. President, Councilor. I have a late file I would like to present this evening and take it under suspension of the rules. <coughs> Councilor, I, I'm going uh, to agree to that, but as I said from day one, and I want this to be heard by all my colleagues, if there's any late files, <coughs> past presidents have always had the respect and professionalism to know what the late file is. I've said it before. My tenure is uh, concluding quickly, but I'd like to uh, keep that uh, going forward for the next president as well. I'll accept the late file. Thank you. Thank you. Communication from the Superintendent of Parks requests an authorization to expend grant monies related to the Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, fiscal 2015, our common backyard grant, Mulberry Street Playground, to a recreational open space for the citizens of Brockton. Accepted placed on file. We have a communication from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the That same. too is accepted placed on file. And then we have an appropriation from the uh, of $125,000 from the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, EEA, fiscal 2015, our common backyard grant and incorporating as well is concurring with the allocating of $25,000 from Brockton Redevelopment Authority, BRA, fiscal 2015, our common backyard grant city contribution to City of Brockton Parks and Recreation Department, fiscal 2015, our common backyard grant funds. Mr. President. Councilor. Um, uh, Superintendent of Parks, uh, Mr. C Mr. Um, Carpenter, Timothy Carpenter is here. Um, but if, if, if there's no objection, if people have questions, would it be okay? Councilor, are you looking to act on the suspension of the rules on this tonight or to refer it to Fed I call? am. I'm looking to act on the suspension of the rules on this tonight, and I'll tell you why before the vote. Um, this money is to redo Mulberry Street Playground. Um, this is a street that my mother grew up on, and I remember playing in this playground as a child. But for many decades, it has been fenced off and inaccessible to the residents that live in the community. And through the hard work of Mr. Carpenter and the team at the Redevelopment Authority, they found a grant for $125,000 that's going to allow a basketball court and a play unit to be um, placed on this location to revitalize that uh, playground. It's part of uh, funding that the state gives to create new playgrounds so the decision was between Tukas and Mulberry um, no I'm sorry McKinley and Mulberry and the state found McKinley not what is still being used as basketball hoops there kids are there every day so they chose to fund Mulberry Street and the reason I'm asking for this to be taken under suspension of the rules is I spoke with the um, parks superintendent and he expressed his concern of waiting the two months that it would take to get this approved through the normal process because they want to get to work right away to try to get this all done before the bad weather comes. So, so you made a motion to act on the suspension of rules? Yes, please. There a second second. Motion. motion made properly seconded to act on this tonight on the suspension rules. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, anybody have any questions while Mr. Coppin is here? Seeing none. Uh, uh, yeah, I have one question. Just, and it may have been in the, the order. I didn't hear this. There's no matching funds. This is totally funded out of that. from the Brockton Redevelopment Authority in the amount of $25,000. And it is a reimbursement grant. M meaning what? What's meaning that once the project is completed, the city essentially fronts the money, but the state refunds, you know, gives us back every every um, penny that we spent on the project up so to once it's finished, 000. we get it it's a zero it's a net zero to the net city. Net zero. Okay, thank you. Thank uh, you. Uh, Question is uh, on adoption by a roll actually, call vote. Just one question please. Um, Councilor, please. Councilor Please stand. Oh, sorry. sorry. I apologize for that. Sorry about that. Okay. Mr. Carpenter, so um, you're anticipating this project not costing more than the $125 that the grant is allotted? Um, $125,000, excuse me. I don't believe that it will. Okay, and if it doesn't, then we will only get reimbursed up to the $125,000. Correct. You can spend more than $125,000. Um, the the design that we've come up with is right around that 125,000. Okay. Well, it's 
it's more closer to 150, but there's the 25,000 from the BRA. Okay, and this plan is it absent some of the other um, some of the other stages like the 25% planning and engineering? It's absent all that, right? You just have to come up with a design and then put it into action. This correct? includes design. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other questions for Mr. Carpenter? Seeing none. Questions on adoption by roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please read the roll. Hey, yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Napoli. Yes. Why? Yes. 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 Appropriations hereby granted, counselors. Counselors, I know we're in summer session, but we need to uh, maintain etiquette and uh, proper decorum here in the chamber, so we need to stand. And I might have been remiss earlier tonight. And also, uh, again, on late files, I will not accept another late file if I don't know about that prior to the hearing night. I just won't accept it. That's the way it's going to be. Counselors, uh, Two points of information. Uh, again, Mike Thorson, DPW Commissioner, is retiring. There's a retirement party for him tonight, DPW uh, Commissioner, uh, and it was a Pastor Benny, a Tuto Benny, and we wish him well in his uh, retirement years. Also, today in the city of Brockton, they rededicated Tomaselli Square. Uh, as you may recall, uh, last summer, three of you weren't here. Last summer, Lorraine Louisi, who is the niece of Joseph Tomaselli, came and gave us a great presentation relative to maintenance and upkeep of the more memorial squares, and that did trigger uh, a lot of, uh, of or Dave Farrell's part, a lot of veterans that had died in the service of our country being recognized and signs going up. Uh, an individual, Mr. Gaff, the other day on, on uh, Pleasant Street who pe perished D-Day, that, that went up. Mr. Cashman's is going up uh, next week. Mr. Tomaselli's uh, went up today. Again, the City Council approved the square dedication of 47. And, uh, 71 years ago he died and they did do that today. It was a great turnout. I want to thank Dave Farrell, not just for this event, but for all the events he's doing to remember the veterans. Uh, Brian Matter as well and Jack O'Connor and the Police Honor Guard and of course our colleague and, uh, and veteran who served our country admirably, Paul Stadinsky. Thank you for being there, Paul. Anything else before us? Uh, Mr. Go ahead. Mr. President, just a question. Uh, next finance will be July 21st, I believe, correct? That's the third Monday in July. That's FinCom, yes. For those members of the Public Safety Committee, there's one minor item. I'm going to be calling a public safety meeting that night at 6.45. So if you could just, if you're on public safety, plan on getting here a few minutes early. Counselors, again, now that we're done with the budget, we are in a strict summer session. So we will be meeting uh, the third Monday, okay, in July and August relative to finance, and the fourth Monday at 8 o'clock in July and August relative to City Council. Third and fourth, if you could put that on your calendars, we'd love to see you. Anything else, Council, that you have? Yes, if I could just have a, a moment of personal privilege today. Council Bond, you may. Today I was um, honored to attend the uh, Adult Learning Center graduation. Uh, myself and Council Stewart, actually we were there and we handed out um, some certificates to some of the graduates that were there, listened to some of their inspiring stories of, of their dedication and their, their hard work to get there. Some of them, their uh, high set, I think it's called now, it's a new kind of GED uh, right. diploma. Um, another woman uh, went all the way to Maine to take her test because she missed the test deadline here in Massachusetts. So um, these are folks that are now woven into the fabric of our community. And also there were probably about 20 um, or about 20, 22 people that received their certificates for citizenship today as well at the Adult Learning Center. And it was a really a heartwarming experience. And then after I, I um, went with the mayor to Brookfield School where they dedicated and uh, did the ribbon cutting for the Safe Routes to School project from Mass Dot, um, where now that entire area of uh, Ward 6, uh, where Council Dubois is from, they now have a really nice sidewalk, a wide sidewalk where they can walk all the way around to Sully, uh, Sully Road. And that was a really, um, a really good project that uh, the city invested in with help from the state and uh, with the, the partnerships that we've created. So I, I just wanted to make sure I gave that shout out. Congratulations to all those uh, folks that graduated today and um, in September those students going to Brookfield they'll have a nice new way to walk and to ride their bikes and um, safe way to get to school. Thank you Council. Council we also need to uh, remember the BHS uh, choral uh, group just sang they were just recognized and they sang back up to Foreigner and I mean that was uh, a national honor it really was it's uh, it's just a great thing uh, and I know Matt Cunningham up there is doing wonders along with uh, Mr. Macrina and also Bob Hogan on the drama. So we congratulate them and we wish them well and we look forward to them in the future. Anything else before us? Seeing none, City Council is hereby adjourned.